now to some baseball, which is a first for a 5-4-3 so far. As we're winding down the season, there's been a lot of impressive pitchers. The Cy Young race is heating up. Let's go AL first. Vince, AL Cy Young MVP. My, my AL Cy Young, Zach Greinke. First in ERA, first in whip, second in batting average against, first in OBP against, first in home runs against, seventh in innings, third in strikeouts. He's having a great year. He's on a bad team. He'd have more wins if he was on a better team. Uh, so that's my Cy Young. I, you know, I can't disagree. I mean, I've been, I made it a point to try and disagree as much as I can with Vince today. Uh, but today, this is not one of those times when I can really disagree. Zach Greinke, without question, is hands down the Cy Young winner in uh, the AL. Just to give you an idea, yes, he's first in the ERA, 2.06 ERA. The, that is .4 lower than the second place guy, Felix Hernandez who is uh, actually at 2.49, so .43 lower than the second place guy, which is an absolutely ridiculous stat. He's 16-8 on the year. However, Kansas City has scored the second fewest runs in the AL, averaging 4.23 runs per game, which is a full run lower than the first place, which is the Yankees, which I believe they're up about 5.6. So imagine if he had that kind of run support. In Grinke's eight losses by decision, the team has only scored 15 runs. Yet he's still able to pull out that many wins, which is just the, the mark of an absolutely unbelievable pitcher. The only shame for Grinky right now is that he's on a team that can't be competitive. Uh, that's the only way I see it. Yeah, I see it the same way pretty much. Yeah. So we'll switch gears now. NL MVP a lot closer than the AL MVP. I guarantee you that Vince and I will not agree on this one. Vince, go ahead. So we're doing... NL MVP, not or NL, NL Cy Young. Young. NL okay, Cy Young. I was just making sure. My NL Cy Young award winner is Javier Vasquez. He's first in all of baseball in swing and miss percentage. No one can touch him. He's second in strikeouts, third in whip, fourth in innings, sixth in ERA. He does have the luxury of being on a good team, but not a great team. And he also has been victim to the Braves not scoring runs, especially earlier in the year. I believe he has one loss since late June. So uh, the Cardinals pitchers have a much better offense and they're going to score a lot more runs. Javier Vasquez should have at least five more wins, but the bullpen blew a lot of games from early in the year and he hasn't got some support in some games, so I think that's my Cy Young award winner. Unfortunately for Vince, when you're looking at Cy Young award winners, not a lot of guys who vote on it are going to say, well, if this happened, he would have better stats. They're going to go with the guy who has the best stats. And right now I'm telling you, it's Chris Carpenter of the St. Louis Cardinals. Number one in ERA, 2.30 earned run average per nine innings. And you cannot not, not get enough importance to that stat. Also, 16-4 and four only has been responsible for four losses throughout the season, which not a lot of pitchers can say. 138 strikeouts, uh, 37 walks. I mean, yeah, the the Cardinals are St. Louis are, are, are seventh in runs in the NL, and, and you know you got to give that uh, Vince has a point about the offense. But all you can do, you cannot look at what's not there. You have to look at what's there. And right now, Chris Carpenter, which is a great story because he had been injury plagued for the past couple of years, finally getting back up on the horse and finally able to show why he is a previous Cy Young Award winner and why he is a he should be the Cy Young Award winner this year. Chris Carpenter also missed some time early in the year, so I believe he has about 30 or 40 less innings than some other pitchers in the race. So I would argue that his ERA might be a little higher if he had pitched more innings. So I think it's going to go to a guy that's been there the whole year, made every single start, and deserves the award like as much as, much as Carpenter. Like Tim, Tim Lincecum Lincecum isn't I can't, on the playoff Vince, season. I, I understand what you're saying, but you can't do that. You can't look at what stats are not there. Yeah, he missed a little bit of time, so his ERA might be higher if there's more innings. You know what else it might be? It might be lower because of those, you know, three, four starts, however many he missed, if he dominated, you know, he goes eight innings, one run, uh, seven innings, two runs, and on that, he's got a lower ERA. So you cannot go around and say that the stats might be worse. You just have to go off of based on what's there. You could also say in previous years that you can't win an MVP award on a last place team because how valuable can you be on a last place team? Alex Rodriguez did it. Pulls is one on a third place team. It's the same type of thing there. Uh, if you had more run support, just like Granke, Vasquez had more run support, he'd have five more wins. Yeah, but Granke's been able to have those dominating stats regardless of the team that he's been on. And, and Vasquez that. can't do that. He has, and, these and are he dominant stats right here. These, these aren't lousy Carpenter numbers. is dominant stats, and that's why he's going to win the Cy Young. 
but we'll leave more of that debate for when the Cy Young Award wins actually come out later in the year and we'll be sure to debate on uh, who won and who lost. However, right now we're going to switch to our last topic of the day. We're going to go to college football. A lot of big headlines from the weekend. Three top ten teams go down. You know, people starting to jockey for position in the BCS standings as we creep closer and closer to those standings coming out. Vince, give me your biggest headline in college football. My biggest headline is Penn State once again proving the futility of the Big 11 in a big game. They scored on the first play. They <laughs> scored three points after that. When you think you're a national title contender, you can't do that. The thing is, too, Iowa didn't even play a good game to beat them. They played a pretty bad game, and they still beat them. Ricky Stanzi threw for 125 yards and two interceptions, zero touchdowns. He didn't even play a good game. Darrell Clark's supposed to be a Heisman contender. He played awful. He had a Jamarcus Russell type game, 12 for 32, 198 yards, three interceptions. If you think you're a really good conference, you have to play those big games, you have to win those big games, and the Big Ten hasn't done that. Well, I mean, without question, uh, you know, the Penn State – Penn State loss was a disappointing loss for them and for the Big Ten. I mean, uh, you know, what can you say about it? Vince is right about it. I mean, he's taking a shot at me again because I am a Penn State fan. However, I completely agree. It, it, you know, it was a, a tragic performance. However, to me, that's not the biggest headline coming out of this weekend. The biggest headline was the concussion that went to Tim Tebow. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, I mean, what's the big deal? Here's the big deal. Tim Tebow's concussion. Tim Tebow so far this season has accumulated 11 total touchdowns, 6 passing, 5 through the rush. That is half of the Florida Gators' total touchdowns throughout the first couple games. He's also the leading rush on team. 55 carries, 271 yards, 4-5 of those touchdowns. He is accounted for a sixth of the team's total rushing yards. Plus, remember, he gets pulled out of the out at the end of the game for a lot of games. And plus, he didn't even finish the Kentucky game because of the concussion. I mean, he in that Kentucky game, even... With the flu, he's able to put up three touchdowns just in the first half alone. And you're going to take out that guy, previous Heisman Award winner. Could have been the Heisman Award winner last year. Right now, probably the leading Heisman Award winner. You take him out, especially against teams in the SEC. They got LSU, number four, coming up this weekend. Without question to me, that is the biggest headline in college football. I don't think it is because Tim Tebow is going to be back next week. And he's we have play, no idea if Tim Tebow is going to be back next week. I guarantee you he's back and playing in that game. Did you talk to him? Did you call him? No, I him? didn't. But I know Tim Tebow played a month after breaking his hand for a national championship and won that game. So that's A national championship game is a lot, lot different than a conference game. I don't think I, when I don't they, think when they have Tim the rest Tebow, of the season to look out for. What Tim Tebow's done and what he stands for, I don't think there's any way he's missing this game. I don't think there's any way he's missing this game too, but it might not be his choice. Remember, concussions. The NCAA has put in a lot of regulations on dealing with concussions. They have the baseline test they give at the beginning of the year, where it's a bunch of tests uh, on a computer, about 20 minutes, where they test you know memory, speed. Uh, speed with memory, visuals, stuff like that. They test your brain's function to get a baseline. After the concussion occurs, they retest that player to see where they're at. They did not release the, te the, the stats of that test. They're saying Tim Tebow is feeling a lot better, but we have no idea his condition. It might not even, he might say, I want to go out and play, but he might not even be able to play. Yeah, but the thing is, too, how good a defense does Florida have? Can they win these games without him? You saw Oklahoma yeah, no. didn't do too bad without Bradford. They won. I think they went one and one, but they went one and zero oh, uh, because uh, well, Bradford we started the game that they lost. So uh, I well, think yeah, it but Bradford still be wasn't done. being effective in the game they lost anyways. They were losing that game before he even went out. Yeah, so I mean, so. I just just to me, Tim Tebow's overall importance has to be the biggest headline. But uh, as always, it's uh, up for debate, and that's why we're here, and we'll be here next week again. For Vince, I'm Josh. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Five, Four, Three.